Okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, so, I'm really honored to, to have this uh, speech today. Thanks, uh, Bocar. Thanks, George, for inviting me. Always a pleasure. So, the topic of today is very complex. So, OTT regulation and business that I... Uh, no, I have a, a different mic. So I need this one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hello? Hello? Oh, yes. Yes. So today's topic is very complex. So I ask myself uh, what I can bring to this gentleman, to this ladies today. And uh, I understood that you, part of you are an entrepreneur and uh, coming in the, active in the digital world. And I am a management consultant. So my client normally are uh, CXO, CEOs, and telecom operators. And so what I can bring to you today. I can bring my 15 years experience in, uh, in the sector. I've been, I'm an engineer. I am, but uh, eventually I became the head of uh, regulation and competition competence center in my company, Art De Little. Because I guess that my colleagues uh, understood the solid base on network economics is the basis for regulation and competition. So today, I'm about to speak about this. OTT regulation is not existent. There is rather a patchwork of legislation about, in some countries, for over-the-top player of software company. Probably in the coming years, even the, 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 this acronym OTT will disappear. Because OTT was intended some years ago for the company like Facebook and, and WhatsApp and, and Google. Now they are too big to be called just OTT. They are shaping the world. So, and today will, about, uh, will be about this. To let you know how I see the big transformation going on in the, in the digital sector, including software, uh, device, electronics, and telecoms. Right, we have an issue. This, uh, the first chapter is the problem. And then uh, we will uh, discover uh, what's, uh, what's going on in the, in the big uh, discussion. So, uh, operator, in particular mobile network operator. Why mobile network operator? Because mobile network operator uh, rely their business 60, still 60% on voice business. And OTT introducing VoIP or introducing messaging platform are destroying this business. So this uh, mobile network operator and OTT increasingly compete. And, um, and uh, in markets where now, they argue, there is a lot of imbalances between uh, operators and, uh, and software. So um, they compete across a number of market domains. And if you look at them, network operators normally are, are heavily regulated because they bought a license. So they bought a right. And while OTT, no, they just enter into an open market. But uh, at the end of the day, they compete in the same market, but uh, on a completely different basis. They have a different tax system, they have different uh, privacy rules, they have different labor basis. And this, some argue, can generate a, a differential source of competitive advantage. So this area of asymmetry are discussed. If or not, these asymmetries turn into a differential competitive advantage, we will see in the, in the coming years. We don't know if the regulator will, uh, will accept uh, this, because we don't know at which extent these imbalances are creating really a non-level playing field um, among the, or between the two sectors. Regulation, in any case, should be modernized. Then a personal uh, comment. We are talking about a very uh, innovation-driven sector. More regulation or more regulation burden in general is not good to innovation. So eventually, we want definitely a better regulation, not necessarily, and uh, I, I would say we don't want more regulation. This would be the idea. So I don't know how much you are familiar uh, normally, I work at CEO level, and I provide the big, uh, high-level synthetic figure about what, going, uh, what is going on. But uh, definitely, I mean, uh, you see, I mean, OTT are thriving. I mean, just uh, in international market, for example, the, the red line here 
is the, the billion of minutes of an international telephony. Look how it goes. Okay. Well, if you take Skype, it's just growing increasingly. So now probably, probably Skype is half of international voice uh, business. The only Skype. The biggest uh, telecom operator in the world working at, uh, I don't know, is, is working, still working? No, no, it's not working. Probably I need to, uh, hello, it's not working. Um, So, um, so Skype is the biggest telecom operator, is Tata, hmm? has like 40 billion minutes international traffic. Skype has something like 160 billion minutes. In the messaging sector, you know that uh, WhatsApp is outspacing everybody else. So it's improving like, like hell. And, and only now, probably, this will be the last year of a global growth of a total SMS. That's a big, uh, big turning point. So probably this year or maybe next year, we will, be, we will see the peak of SMS uh, uh, volumes, then decrease. It's not necessarily true. This is just a, a forecast, right? Because SMS can be reinvented in many, in, many, in many ways. Because WhatsApp, for example, is not a secure service. It's just for your chat. SMS can, may have a legal, a legal value because it comes from a trusted network. Okay? So this, you have to take this forecast as an indication. But in reality, the, the world can change a lot. The competitive trends are reflected, are reflected on the value chain. And this is what uh, more interesting for banks, for CEOs, for chief financial officer. So the value is shifting. If, if, you, if you look at the, the value chain, overall the value chain, the global value chain in the digital sector, you can name network operators, device manufacturer, Apple, so Samsung, equipment manufacturer, Nokia, Siemens, uh, Alcatel, Huawei, Ericsson, software company, IBM, for example, content provider, Time War, uh, Disney, and Internet, it's Google, uh, Facebook, Amazon, right? If you look at the real money, which is no revenue, which is free cash flow, normally free cash flow is, uh, is uh, the gross margin that you have, technical term is called EBITDA, Minus investment. This is free cash flow. So it, what is in your pocket after uh, you get your revenue, and you made your investment every year. So in the last six, five years, five years uh, telecom operator that gained the most of the value, so the peak, 34% okay, of the cake, they decrease three percentage points. Devices increase, so Apple is happy. Equipment uh, decrease. So Huawei, Alcatraz, not happy. Software company increase a lot, 5%. Content, to comment. Piracy is destroying content, first comment. Second, is smaller than you could, could think. Content thing seems, seems a very, very big thing, but globally is the smallest. And then the internet is getting, uh, is getting uh, so this, we track this, uh, this number every year. We have a tool we call the value tracker. But this gives you, in one chart, where the money is going over the value chain. If there are these shifts, must be disputes, must be arguments. Okay? People are fighting. Uh, this, is the, this is the why. Okay? Where we will go, we don't know. Well, mo some more numbers, because numbers are always very good. What, uh, uh, so, telecom operator earn one trillion five hundred, one trillion six hundred dollar. This is the total pool of revenue of telecom operator. At the moment, over the top company are digital company, if you, uh, if you are entrepreneurs in digital company, are earning 10% compare, hmm? so a tenth of it. So 150 million, 160, but it's increasing every year, 15%. Eh? So the telecom operator get the money from data, a lot from voice, 
and a little from pay TV. This is how they get money. OTT takes a lot of money from e-commerce, Amazon. A lot from advertising, Google. Then we have a media and games. And then we have a travel software, general software, human resource software, food, uh, food related software. Okay? And there are many, 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 many others, of course, but tiny, tiny sub-segment. Now, what's the pool? We have uh, more or less 2 billion 700 internet users in the world. 700 million are fixed, 2 billion are mobile. The internet company want to be closer and closer to this guy, the user. In the between, there are the telecom operators. They want to get closer, so search for proximity. And the access network, telecom operator, don't want to be disintermediated. Want to remain in their position because, I mean, being in the middle can create an arbitration point of for demand. So a big, a big, a big, uh, the big, the, the debate about net neutrality is now going everywhere. If you have heard of a net neutrality debate, and the story is that uh, Access Network wanted to charge as they, they did in the past from end user, but they wanted to charge also from internet company. Now this double-sided market created some tension. This was the very beginning, but in reality now the net neutrality has to do with the freedom of speech as uh, a philosophical and a religious uh, uh, story. It's, it's now becoming so political, the discussion that is, is requires a complete session to discuss about it. So we will not treat the net neutrality debate. We are not even interested because it's now becoming so political that uh, it's, not, uh, it's not good for you, I believe. The hypergiant is uh, this, this term was uh, was started two three years ago in European uh, in the European community. So the hypergiant, a name like Google, Amazon, Netflix, are enjoying extra cash flows, and they are now even investing in physical assets. They are building their submarine cables. They are building their data center. They are building even Google is building their own fiber in uh, in, the, in uh, Texas, I think, uh, in Austin in Austin. So they build also some more, uh, I don't know how technical you are, content delivery network that are uh, server and software platform for web acceleration. Because it's understood that the internet is, the topology of the internet is not enough. If you want to increase the experience, or improve the experience over the internet, you need to bring uh, the content closer to you. So the server that is serving me must be kilometers away from me to give me the experience of being fast. Otherwise, if I all, all the time try to access a, a server in Chicago or in Palo Alto, the experience will be too poor. So this evidence is increasing the level of litigation between the two parties because they are entering in the dom typical domain of a telecom operator. Another area of, of discussion is these big guys, Skype, Viber, WhatsApp, Uber, taxis, Airbnb as a hospitality, and YouTube, in reality they enter in sector where specific licensing was available. They didn't ask for it. They didn't even pay for it. They didn't apply for any of this license. So they just enter into the market. Okay? So we have a telecom license, transportation license, tourism, and media, and media copyright. So they brutally enter into the market. And that just created the innovation. They even skip any privacy and data protection rules. In many countries, there are rules that are available. Now there are two, two considerations here. If you go in a telecom operator, say, why do you don't launch this new service? The telecom operator will say, because uh, data protection and privacy law prevent me from doing this. And then you argue, but uh, Facebook is doing, Google is doing, what you are not doing? Because uh, they belong to a different uh, jurisdiction. Who is chasing them? There is no capacity for extra national jurisdiction 
you know, uh, regulation power. So the, the, the sentiment is that uh, the OTT are more free to do what they want against the rule. Taxation, I will bring some data here. Okay. It's not applied to this part of the, of, the, of the world, but if you go in Europe, the taxation is a big, uh, is a big issue. And then also local law or competition law. I mean, Facebook merged with WhatsApp. Nobody thought of raising a complaint or issue of antitrust law, for example. They just merged, right? And uh, while if you merge two telecom operators, there is a big discussion at the national level, hmm? if this is allowed or, or not. Internet players are uh, said to enjoy of a lot of tax shield. So there are a lot of simulations. So you just go over the internet and you find your, uh, your, uh, your way. But normally, the problem is that at home, normally OTT is very much an American company. Okay? So at home, they pay taxes, Google. When they are abroad, they pay less. This is true for Apple, this is true for Amazon, this is true for eBay, and this is true for Facebook. A situation of uh, imbalance like that one creates not litigation between a telecom operator and OTT, creates litigation between parts of the world. There must be a war between Europe and US over there. And this war is materializing now because, as you know, Google has been uh, allegedly accused to, uh, to, be, to have a monopolistic power over the search engine in the European community. This is just an attack, but uh, for a battle that is much, and a war which is much, much bigger. So what is happening from a European point of view, a lot of money are migrating from European uh, commun uh, community to US because of these uh, imbalances of the system. So this creates geopolitical struggles. Someone started to calculate the unfair advantage of OTT. They said at the moment, the Microsoft and Google of this world, American company, enjoying 40, al almost 50 percentage point against the typical telecom operator, Telefonica, Origin, whatever. These are the typical European name. A less, a more fair, or a less, uh, a less imbalanced system would reduce the gap of just of 20 percentage points. So just changing the taxation. So lots of uh, people are commenting that uh, this should be the level playing field. What is important for you? This is, uh, this is a big, big discussion for telecom operator. What is for you? For you is probably the fact that there is a, a political tension a regulatory tension to bring uh, some control over the software domain. This, I, this is me. No. So, but definitely is, uh, is uh, a good food for uh, your talks with high level representative of telecom operation if you want to have a partnership with them, an alliance, if you want to make a deal. Because, of course, the telecom operators are in big uh, urgency to find a solution because these imbalances are uh, destroying uh, the value base, the value pool of their business. All these issues go, all these issues go, uh, go on, the, on, the, on, the, on the press on, uh, uh, every day, are constantly noted in public uh, press. Sometimes in a very controversial way. Sometimes, I mean, the people that, I mean, journalists are not really, really prepared to deal with this issue. So there are a lot of uh, mistakes, okay, in the analysis. Unfortunately, now it's becoming political. So even net neutrality is a great currency for politicians that want to get votes. So you achieve a point in which, or you reach a point in which there is no really rationality and there is no technical explanation of why. It's more because there is a short-term currency to get short-term benefit out of this discussion. 
you can, uh, you can even uh, uh, have a fun in uh, tracking the, num the number of disputes that are between over the top and, uh, and, uh, and telecom operator. And definitely, I mean, we found the number, almost we have a 15 over there. The good, news, uh, the good news is that the green one was were self-solved, meaning that the both party found uh, without uh, big lawyers a solution because the, the value at stake is too big. The innovation is too fast to litigate. The bad news is that uh, the number is a little bit increasing. What is nice, what is nice, that uh, well, in general these disputes are, uh, are driven by the fact that the telecom operator want to block an OTT. What is starting happening now, just one case, is the OTT want to block a telecom operator. Say, if you don't commit to my requirements, I will not share with you my content. If, if, you, if you call the Time uh, Warner or Disney or uh, YouTube, uh, and you just don't share your content, the impact on teleconferator can be uh, very, very serious. Okay, so what uh, this, uh, so looking at the future, the nature, the, we need to, to, if, I mean, I understand that this is a little bit more uh, a lecture today about competition, but I think that this uh, is a nice content for, uh, uh, for you. It's all about uh, the nature of competition. And uh, what we need to agree today is that uh, competition has dramatically changed over the last, uh, the last year, and especially, especially in the telecom sector. And uh, an innovation-driven environment requires definitely a, a, new, a new regulation. Now, you should say, but why would I care about regulation? Again, you may care of these complex issues because you want to be informed or you want to participate to the discussion. And definitely, if you meet any CXO, CEO in telecom company, you need to speak this language to, to get along together. So first, uh, first element of this uh, change in nature of a competition. Yesterday, we had very few products. Now, customer demand is very, very complex. When a, custom, a customer requires something, I mean, it's a sophisticated demand. Yesterday was just bread. Now is an experience of having food, if I can use the analogy of the food. So we moved from mobile telephony to mobile computing. Mobile computing is a universe. I will give you some evidence, which is huge. Yesterday was about uh, scalability and reliability of networks. Is my phone line working? Yes or not? Uh, today is about which ap application shall I choose? What is uh, more, more performing? Uh, yesterday, customer demand and customer choice was just based on a number of few features related to the product. And now there is a multiplicity of aspects. So first of all, now, take so trying to understand what the customer wants is a, is a very difficult job. Second element. So first of all, demand is difficult to, be, to track. Second element, intermodality. Intermodality means that uh, if I am a player in the content arena, I attack your domain, which is telecom. If you are telecom and uh, you are in the fix, attack another segment that is in mobile. So players learn to bundle service all together. I sell you mobile fix content uh, and maybe even a ticket to, to Jamaica and a lesson for your children all together. I tend to, to put at the beginning, of, at, the, at the center of this bundle, my core product and discount anything else. So I kill your market to defend mine. Cross subsidies. Cross subsidies in many industries are not permitted. In the digital sector, are brutally permitted. Okay? Cross subsidiation. So I use the extra margin from a product where I'm a champion, where I, am a, I have a monopoly, to subsidize something else. This is very interesting. And create disruption. Even people lose jobs. Ecosystem are the new form 
for generating value. We will spend some time here to, to define what is an ecosystem. So a, yesterday was a competition based on specific market. Now are ecosystem that uh, combine a different market. Today, what is important is not to make money. The very first objective is to have a customer control. When I have a customer control, customer dominance, I wait for you to die, then I can price whatever just later. I, I will show all, all also this part. The global scale. If you play at the national level, and you have to compete with a global player, well, it's a diff tough, tough task. And uh, if you want to be defended against that global, dev the, uh, global player, you don't find an institution that can help you. I mean, you can ask Samina, that is a multinational. But Samina today has not the legislation pa uh, power to help you. So even in Europe, we have a big market, which is um, a US, which is a federal market by design. So they enjoy at least 250 million people uh, uh, market with uh, more or less one uh, legislation. Now probably is not so true. In Europe they are trying to do the same, but in reality they have 28 countries, but uh, to give the power to Brussels is a very lengthy job. In the rest of the world there are just specific uh, small countries, except the cap three. China, Russia and India that can, given their size, you, you can uh, you, you, you can imagine this country like a sort of a market by itself. China, de facto, has its own internet, right? Which is a sort of internet. So there is a problem regulation. You don't have uh, the power, the legislation power to, to manage these uh, global uh, players. Fourth point, unfortunately, the future is not so certain like it was in the past. So future scenario, given the pace of innovation of the digital sector, are impossible to predict. So unpredictability is the only thing that you know right now. And this creates a lot of problem in regulation, because regulation is based on, uh, on something that must be must, must all true for at least 10 years, right? In uh, Europe, a regulation, uh, a regulation window this is between three and five years. <laughs> you know, in the digital sector, in three, five years, what can happen? And this creates a lot of uh, problems. Last point, that you believe or not, in network, in the networks, telecom networks, there is a huge scope for innovation. You may think that the broadband that you experience today is all you can have. And the discussion is all about moving from 1 megabit to 10 megabit to 100 megabit to 500 megabit to 100 me uh, to 1 gig. Is not this. The networks, they are uh, today managing the internet, are really a prehistoric way, a prehistoric technology for providing you this service. There is a huge work, of, a huge work to be done in the future. And, uh, and uh, and what we can, I mean, the possibility we have with the more advanced networks is huge. So one point is that we don't want to kill the innovation process within the networks. And this is a point that is difficult to understand. And probably my friend in the telecom, in the telecom sector don't explain very well this point. Because all the discussion is about moving from 2G, 3G and 4G. And tomorrow to 5G or from copper to fiber. But it's not like that is more complicated, is really much more complex than this. Speed, for example, today are really much less relevant than in the past. At 10, 20 megabit, you can do a lot of, uh, or, or, or you can do a lot of, of, of things. What you miss are completely different parameters that probably you don't know, is latency. Is the delay in the response of something, when I click, Something which is the delay in which I receive the service. Okay? Is, in, is counted in milliseconds. 100 milliseconds, 50 milliseconds, 1 millisecond. Okay? This is a huge impact. We will, uh, I will discuss again uh, more deeply this point uh, later. So, let's associate some charts.
to the main, the five points that I just uh, introduced to you. So this is, I found this is, uh, this, uh, from Vision Mobile, uh, a number of charts are very nice. But they, they, they make in a very simple way. So yesterday, four apps, OK? Messaging, uh, mail, uh, internet, some, uh, some voice, OK? And camera, OK? This was the, the world of the past. Now, more than one billion app. Service, telecoms, this was the past. Today, mobile platforms which has nothing to do with telegrams. This is all software. This is all wires, all antennas. Differentiation, how, how to compete, was the quality of the network in the past. Today is price competition for my friends in the telecom sector. All they have is price competition. What is the new competition? Yesterday was, my network is more reliable than yours. So the voice call doesn't drop. And my network is bigger than yours. When you travel to Jamaica, I can cover you. Oh, this was the, the old paradigm. Now, it's just choice. I can offer you more. I'm more flexible in combining your products. I can be as close as possible to, exactly, to your exact needs. In just six years, this transformation. So. It's called the mobile computing now, OK? So smartphone. That, the word phone is really, really reductive. This is very nice. Yesterday, the telecom sector was about the 3% worldwide of the spend of your pockets, OK? Today, the mobile computing cover the total variety of your spending. You have a, an app for that, no? This is the claim of Apple, OK? You have an app for education, communication, housing, transport, food, recreation, restaurant, furnishing, clothing, alcoholic health. You have an app for that. So you can imagine. So the world of digital is uh, how much is? 33 times bigger than the telecom sector, in theory, right? To cover the 100% spending that you have. And uh, so there is a huge, a broader scope for consumer need to address. There is, uh, there is the certainty that internet is a must have to communicate. I mean, you cannot be, live without your Twitter or, or Facebook today. No? You, you miss something. And uh, consumer move from one platform to another in hours. So every hour I switch between WhatsApp, Skype, Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, uh, every hour I check this, and I, I move. And consumer uh, choose their platform and services over a variety of aspects. That's why I said at the very beginning, multifaceted customer demand. So it's so complex. Of course, the telecom operator is in big trouble eh, in, this, uh, in this. So if you are an entrepreneur of the digital sector, they need you. They need you to address this world. Because the majority of their organization is about the wires, antenna, maybe walls of data center. Right? So they need you. That's why I thought that this, uh, I understand that this is a regulatory topic, is very complex, very technical, very telecom oriented, but it's uh, the basis of the knowledge that you should have for interacting at the maximum level with the CEO of a telecom company. And the, and the other assumptions, they, they need you desperately. Intermodality, just to give a chart to the concept of intermodality across industry competition, this is, this is nice. Yesterday, The Guardian, a newspaper, was fighting against The Sun, another newspaper. Vodafone was fighting against O2, right? Today, Sun is fighting with Angry Birds. Because the need is not buying a newspaper, but it's killing 10 minutes of your time <laughs> between when commuting from home to the office, right? So the need is completely different. We have a reshape. Yes, it was to buy a phone line of phone services. Today, whether Vodafone is competing with WhatsApp to keep in touch with the friend. So the reformulation of the need, the basic need, is all. Is all is 
all that is driving the change. So yesterday um, was defined by product feature, feature, people like me, an engineer. Today is defined by product benefit. What is that for? Okay. So the perspective has completely changed. So customer oriented, that uh, famous word, huh? customer driven. In reality, don't you should, <laughs> unfortunately, you cannot make a survey. In, in the past, in the marketing strategy of the past, there were something called the focus group, right? <laughs> the, the company went to ask, wanted to ask you, what is your next innovation? Simply, the market don't, doesn't know what is the innovation. You cannot ask your customer, what do you want more? Okay? You can invent something and then ask, you like this or not? But you cannot ask. So it's, uh, I mean, uh, in innovation, uh, you cannot ask your, uh, your customer if what you are doing is a good, uh, I mean, uh, is what they need. They just, after experience your service, they can say, ah, this is interesting. So that's why it's so, it's so difficult. So what is happening now that, and we discovered this, that markets as were defined by regulation yesterday are completely artificial construct of the legislator. Today, Amazon compete in all the layers of the digital, uh, the digital value chain. And Facebook do the, does the same. Vodafone does the same. Try to do the same. Micro does the same. E everybody is competing with everybody. So let's read some, uh, some points. E-commerce players are actually active in advertising. So, sorry, you were selling uh, goods and you are active in advertising? Why? Advertising companies are active in electronics. Electronics players provide internet services. So everybody would want to kill everybody else. Online retail, advertising, gadget and internet service, they are all different markets but clash against each other. So all these guys all compete in all markets. Okay, try to design a regulation for this. So the regulation as it was written in the past was, this is the market of a pasta. This is the market of a pizza. Okay? And we have in pasta, we have a Barilla competing with uh, someone else. And in pizza, we have, uh, <laughs> I don't remember the big name. <laughs> now it's, uh, it's, uh, it's completely different. So those artificial constructs were created to make sense of the business world yesterday. And intended to compare similar products and companies. But today is not possible. So imagine, I mean, when... Uh, uh, I mean, normally I'm asked to, to help to, to design uh, the modern regulation, but it's very, it's, very, it's very difficult. What is really driving the competition are ecosystem. Yesterday in mobile telephony, we had uh, a network, the antenna, and all the ecosystem around, right? It was, the network was having, uh, so the telecom operator having relationship with the supplier, Nokia for the uh, Samsung and Sony Ericsson for the, the mobile phones. Then you have the supplier of technology. And then, uh, then you have the, the users. And then you have some content, maybe ringtones. <laughs> okay. And then the institution. Nike now is like something like that. Is uh, an incredible, an incredible uh, networks of relationship. That's why in, in most of the strategies, of telecom operator, partner management is a, a key essential ingredient mm, to thrive in the future. Yesterday was uh, just a sector, now is a competition between uh, industries. But uh, we want to learn more about this uh, ecosystem because it's nice. Ecosystems are tremendously effective. And Apple and uh, Google are uh, famous for this, right? So. Uh, Apple invented around the Apple Store and iOS platform an ecosystem that bring together mobile application developers with accessories manufacturer, with, uh, with of course, uh, all the, the, the device, App Store and content platform, and content owners. So this mechanism, if you count, is uh, generate uh, the $150 billion. Google does much less compared to Apple, but for completely different reason. You want to dominate, you want to be sure 
that you are loyal to Google. You want to be the they, the, the, the way they create business is not with the classical tool of uh, let's make a business case, let's see if the, the, the business case turn positive. No, they introduce a number of products that create, that just drive your loyalty in the market to defend the core engine of their revenues, which is advertising. So they give away a lot of value to the customer just to secure the relationship with you. E now, it's at this level of the game, it's not yet your, ga your level, but I hope so in the next future. So this, the main strategy is that each of these guys try to excel in a specific point of the value chain, see the red dots, and then to enlarge, okay? even with no profit objectives. So Facebook uh, uh, start with the ads, Google with the ads, the, we have the networks, we have the devices, we have the software license, we have the e-commerce, but then everybody expanded in any other direction. There are some evidence, for example, it is believed that the App Store revenue share, so you know that Apple asks 30% of the revenue when you sell it through the App Store. Well, apparently, Apple is not making any profit out of it. It's just to maintain the uh, mobile developers community out of it. Android uh, has been designed uh, by Google to better deliver advertising, not to make money. Internet Explorer and Skype are believed the strategy of Microsoft to, to defend the software base. Amazon Kindle, apparently, is not making any money, zero profit out of the hardware. It's just to sell more books. WhatsApp was uh, incredibly bought at uh, for, uh, 14 or 18 billion dollars, just because uh, it's believed that since we spend a lot of time on this messaging, that can be in the, f the future marketplace for selling whatever, from advertising to e-commerce or mobile money in the future. So it's a big, big, big bet. Say, there is where, I mean, they understood that, that is, uh, you are spending more time over there, more time, more, uh, and more eyeballs, I mean, more advertising revenue, and more, uh, more opportunity. Apple and Google showed us uh, how innovation created delivered values. So all the basis of the new competition is creating a network effect. M network eff effect means that uh, the, more, the more people join the, the party, the benefit that the people participating in the party goes exponentially and non linear. Okay, so this is uh, the, the definition, the, tech, the mathematical definition of network effect. So the value of the network grows exponentially, square two, hmm? the, 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 uh, the number of people participating to the network. So these, are, these were all the platform. This was a typical software platform. This is a communication platform. And this is an app ecosystem platform. So you had the, the participants in the past were just uh, onset maker, and here were user. They use both. They create a double network effect because bring together more users call more the developers, more developers call more users. So it's a, a, a virtuous cycle that is being created. So, and in fact, the winning factor is connecting users with developers. This was. Yesterday, well, the model were completely different. It was sharing costs. The idea was to share costs. So I, I, I am an engineer, you are an engineer, and we build together the platform. Nobody thought of linking together with your user. Or, or, or the communication platform were too much focused on telecom, oh sorry, on, on users, not on developers. So network effects with the objective that the winner takes it all is the strategy they implement. So when you win with the network effect, at least you get between 70 and 90% of market share in that specific context, because it's a closed system by definition. The growth, in fact, is exponential, and here is the regulation problem. The platform, the core engine of your uh, competitive is a monopolistic rent, is closed group. So it's not open, it's not portable, 
cannot be shared, and there where the regulator should, uh, should investigate in the future. So apparently, if you are a developer of Google, and you try to, uh, and you work actively in, uh, in uh, this uh, software segment, you can uh, immediately tell me that uh, the Google software ecosystem is one of the closest in the world. So you cannot change, you cannot propose, everything has been designed to favor Google objective, not even the consumer objective. And this is from a regulatory point of view. It's complicated. The problem is that new entrants, so newcomers, would need to achieve the impossible to reach the same level of Apple and Google today. So it's, it's almost impossible to, to win that game because uh, you know, you have to bring together its uh, uh, manufacturer, user, telecom operator, uh, partner, and, and content, all in the same, in, 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 in a very, very fast way. So achieve the same outcome, cheaper, faster, and better. It's difficult. Activate all sides of networks simultaneously. And uh, in case you fail, you would, uh, I mean, even I mean, as a newcomer, you would oblige your customer to incur in the switching cost from one platform to another. So at the moment, is, is, uh, what I'm telling you is that from a regulatory point of view, this, uh, if the ecosystem concept as a definition is uh, understood at the level of regulation, this uh, will uh, probably be the, a topic for uh, modern regulation. So we will not have more the definition of a market, the definition of a product. We, will have a we need to have a, a, a way to manage the, the, the concept of ecosystem. So how did, this, this, this ecosystem generate is based on now is coming something is called I found this very interesting asymmetric business model. Why is asymmetric? The way they call it asymmetric is because. I have something which is for pay, and I give away a lot for free. So asymmetric in the sense that I defend a product where I want to get money, and I give 90% of the customer value for free. So just 10%. So that's why telecom, telecom operators are so, are so unhappy. This company destroyed the value of 10 SMS to retain the, the, the value of one SMS. So destroy 90% to keep, uh, to keep just the 10% for them. But this 10% at the global level, so it's a big number for them in any case. Well, in, in a, a telecom operator just uh, working on a small market. So cross industry business model force profit to migrate to, to, from one market to another. So what's up? From the telecom sector, I destroy value in the SMS market and I get money in the advertising. So there is a profit migration. This uh, powerful competitor with this mechanism are created uh, in second. Because I give away a, such a clear uh, value proposition. It's for free. <laughs> that uh, is uh, very effective. And uh, this disrupts giant companies. So immediately, big incumbent become all the dinosaurs in second. And uh, once the dinosaur is dead, I can, uh, of course, uh, rule again. So the typical asymmetric uh, competitor destroy, wants to find a market where to destroy some value uh, by supplying loss-making products. And in this bundle, bring uh, something that generates some, uh, some revenue. The asymmetric competitor benefit from increased demand in this bundled uh, product. And what it does is that redistribute m a, a huge value to the uh, end user, and just a small part of the value keep for themselves, for himself. Mm? So this is, a, and if you see Google, it's incredible. Google operate in mobile, TV, personal software, enterprise software, personal computer, travel, energy, and transportation. And this list is not exhaustive, for sure. Okay. So it's creating a lot of a touch, uh, uh, touch point when in reality are hooks to you okay, to keep close to, to, to the ecosystem. So asymmetric business model, this is interesting, 
have uh, no market boundaries. These uh, competition elements, I think, are good also for your strategy, by the way. Because, of course, we studied these elements today from a regulatory point of view, but are competitive games, tactics, strategies in the market. So in reality, you can bundle your product, whatever. I was mentioning the pasta, the pizza, the travel. You, you, can, you can link to the digital good, whatever you want. The good thing is that uh, you find the market that is complementary to yours, right? So you have a core product, and you see what is. Uh, then uh, you boost the demand in this market that are complementary to, 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 to yours by giving that product for free. And let's create a winning product, fantastic winning product. Then you bundle, and you create, a, uh, with this bundle, you have a, a competitive advantage compared to the old dinosaurs that were working in that domain. And then you push for migration of profit from these complementary markets to your core product. Now, this is working very well in the, digital, in the digital world because the marginal cost of a digital good is very, very small. So if I have to generate a product for George or for one billion customer, the additional cost of providing the service for one billion is marginal. That's why I can do it. Okay? So in that case, really the competitor is squashed because, I mean, a big incumbent has uh, now a telecom operator has between uh, 100 million to 150 million uh, clients. Uh, any hypergiant OTT play with the 1 billion. They are always uh, one, uh, the order of 1 billion. So in the, in the book, in the, uh, I don't know how, how many of you did econo uh, studied economics. I didn't. But uh, the volume effect uh, in the old books was about scale efficiency. It was, uh, so economy of scale, right? Or economy of scope, I, if I remember well. No, this is not the, what is driving this company today. They want to just, uh, it's about just integrating and improving customer experience. It's completely a different way to, co to, to, to compete. They don't want to improve their cost base. They want to create the ecosystem. So the uh, economical logic is completely different from what we study at the university. I'm done. Uh, and this is uh, the effect that we have. If you make an analysis of a market share of operator, is a small, small chunk of uh, at the global level. And then if you go up in the value chain, you discover that Microsoft, for example, has 90% market share of, of, a, of software, uh, software uh, market. iOS has uh, more than 50% of a mobile operating system market. Apple has more than 70% of a market of App Store. So it's clearly that the dominance, monopoly, rent, all the concept of regulation where there are, we have a new monopoly is up in the value chain. What, so we are moving from a local dimension, a global dimension. And now what is happening is that uh, the net neutrality problem is uh, moving to a search content neutrality because the problem <laughs> of dominance is moving here. Here we have uh, the new monopolistic guys. So uh, the problem is that we have a few dominant marketplace. We have no device software interoperability, where we uh, is moving from uh, an Apple device uh, or to uh, moving your content from an Apple device to a BlackBerry is impo not possible, or to Android is not possible. Uh, we have a few web acceleration platform, even, I mean, this is a very technical. Uh, I wouldn't spend that much. Uh, definitely in the search and content domain, we have just Google, and that's why uh, Europe is accusing Google of uh, maneuvering uh, instrumentally the search engine uh, in its, uh, to its favor. To be honest, okay, this innovation in this sector was after many years. I mean, these uh, plat w w uh, software platforms that we know today, Apple, Android, Blackberry, Windows Phone, are coming out a number of attempts in the past. They were just not successful. So people tried and tried and tried. 
okay? So the lesson learned for us is just, uh, it's difficult to, to understand what will work and what won't work. So uncertainty and unpredictability dominate the digital uh, sector. So these winners are out of the ashes of many, many attempts done in the past, okay? So uh, what is uh, the last point, uh, very important, is uh, that uh, in this environment, uh, and this is important from a regulatory point of view, because uh, we need the certainty to, 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 to write a new law. We need the certainty to write a new regulation. But we don't have the tools because we don't have a predictable scenario in the future. Don't use anymore the, the business case. It's not working in this, uh, in this sector. So uh, the conventional planning methods uh, work for infrastructure investment telecom sector, but they won't work for the digital sector. So my friend, the telecom operator, trying to apply their investment logic to the digital sector will just, will just fail. Traditional financial tools is, uh, fail because there is a reason. They don't value the cost of doing nothing. When you have a business case, and this is not very nice, and not comparable to telecom, you should not compare with the fact that it's lower to your previous profit. You should compare to the cost of doing nothing. So uh, that means that uh, high level of uncertainty requires a completely new uh, approach. It's called the discovery driven. You will try, okay, by attempts. And the best company, what they do, they attempt and immediately they start with the assumption, but they are ready to change the assumption every month. No? There is a famous story of Instagram. No, Instagram was intended as a messaging platform. They, had, at a certain point, they discovered that uh, people like to share a photo. And immediately, they changed the, the objective of the platform from being uh, just a messaging platform to a photo sharing platform. But they changed the assumption as they learned from the first, uh, Im uh, the, for the first feedback from the market. This was impressive. And now Instagram is, uh, is, is believed to overtake Facebook even because it's more uh, uh, picture-centric. Last point on the networks, uh, what I want to give to you for, for today is uh, please don't believe the networks today are the, the best. So I'm really against the net, neutrality, the net neutrality law because I have no clue of what is needed in the network. Okay? A network is it's done by four layers. The access, which is the antenna, or the best uh, central office close to your core, a edge part, a core part, and then the application. Application meaning for the network point of view. Okay? Each of that part is subject to a big, big innovation that is not yet here. Okay? So what you must believe, and please uh, send this message to the, your next meeting with the CEO of a telecom company, there is a long way and long scope for innovation in the networks. This will please the CEO definitely, <laughs> and they need you. So the future will be about uh, giga connectivity. This is what you know already, speed. But millisecond latency, I told you already. Seamless connectivity, meaning that you want to switch from one or another access network uh, with the seamless, without uh, that you realize this. Quality control of demand, please, please give me a product that uh, can connect me to Boca when I'm in Rome because I want to have a video call high quality. I don't have this product right now. Okay, I try Skype, and 70% of the time, this quality of Skype is not working. We don't have a product for that. Okay? And if I ask to, for a specific product, I should go for an enterprise product. I should pay $10,000 per month for an MPLS protected connection. Okay? I wouldn't pay this much <laughs> for this. And then uh, I would, uh, if even more complex stuff for open architecture. I, I don't have the time to, this, to say this. So the last, uh, the last uh, three slides. Thinking of a regulation uh, modernization in the future requires to think of a completely new uh, market scenario in which we have innovation. And we want to tell the regulator that uh, we have just learned that innovation requires a big number because the ecosystem that we, we, we just uh, described are based on billions of users, right? So this is quite important in the telecom sector because if you keep telecom operators small in the number of 20, 30 million uh, clients, you don't have the user base to really to implement uh, innovation. You need scale for innovation. So 
the thesis is uh, don't be scared of creating uh, massive infrastructure in few number of players. So consolidation is probably a big trend for the future of telecoms. Ecosystem and partner platform. The values generated through this, plat this tool that I described. So I need scale. When I need scale, I need a partner network to bring uh, the element for each partner, in, and then is the value is created. Uncertainty. I'm sorry. I don't have the crystal ball. So I need rules that allow me to scout different solutions. If you, if you, as soon as, soon as you, uh, you introduce a rule, you distort a, a, a natural process for innovation. So uncertainty means that from a regulation point of view, you need flexibility. Technology progress and adoption must be taken for sure. Technology has a huge scope to improve and be sure the customer will like it will adopt in, in a very short time. So this is the basis for uh, modern regulation. If, I, I, if you ask me a guess about how the, regulator, uh, the regulatory environment will look like in the future, will probably uh, be in levels, three levels. Today is all about network regulation. Probably we'll, uh, we will see the rise of uh, a digital service regulation. Now, unfortunately, I, as I will say in a moment, this is a patchwork in the world. And then we will have a horizontal regulation. A number of rules like privacy, data protection, are not about technology. It's about um, people rights. Okay? So contractual powers, uh, there are a number of uh, public interests are not specific in, uh, to network regulation, neither to digital. It's just horizontal. So probably what we'll see is the creation of these two recipients, and, the, and we will see a lot of laws moving from one recipient to the upper one. Okay, this is my big big guess for uh, for the future of, of regulation. That will imply a big thing for my friend or telecom operator. It will less regulatory burden at the network level, a more playing field. So probably we'll see more regulation for OTT, okay, but broader. And uh, you will not really distinguish if this is regulation because uh, you are a digital player or if this is regulation because it's just a horizontal law. Okay, privacy. I mean, it's horizontal law. There are just uh, uh, some roadblocks. We'll, uh, this will take a long time. Because to implement uh, changes, the first problem is that we understood that, that often legislati le legislative power is needed. Legislative, uh, le legislative change takes ages, gladial ages. Okay? So this will imply probably to be effective, we will need new laws, new laws. But uh, probably will take time. Some part of the world have uh, less of this. So emerging countries normally miss this part. Okay? This is more true in the US or in Europe. Okay? So we'll have less tools to balance all the party. Then uh, another problem is uh, many. Uh, Many parts of the world are introducing specific laws. India, Russia, Vietnam are introducing some obligation for cloud provider, machine to machine provider, social, social, network, uh, social uh, networks, specific laws. And when you introduce this uh, at the national level, uh, you don't uh, have a platform that uh, organizations like Samina could facilitate, uh, you may end up with a lot of fragmentation with hinder, no? with the could and hindering the, the process of having uh, because then you have to always manage the local level with the with the global uh, low, uh, global scale. It's impossible to think that there will be part of the world where you don't have Facebook. You have in reality uh, today. Today where there are countries that just don't allow this. And then taxation. Taxation uh, is, uh, is just more than a fight uh, in the sector or digital sector between the telecom and OTT. As uh, I, I said at the very beginning, it's, um, 
is a geopolitical war between uh, geographies. It was a long journey, no? a lot of information, I couldn't stop, but uh, I just want to give you a flavor of uh, the most complex issues that are discussed. Okay? In, uh, in, uh, among CEOs, uh, uh, highest level of institution in, uh, in, the, in the world. I hope that you enjoy a little bit about this. Thank you, and I'm open to any question, of course.